oh, maybe, maybe I can coach my teammates, mm. right? Maybe I can help other people out. And that's when the idea sparked. Why not host this? Like, why not host an event out of this, right? Outside, you know, mm -hmm. because we can't, you know, couldn't do anything inside. So we did. We first started with a bunch of friends, then started building up and up and up and up. And then we, we just blew up over 80 people, 90 people. We had vendors, we had them, we had Under Armour also, you know, help us out with the event. And it was, it was something crazy, something cool, something completely different that the city hadn't seen in my opinion before. Mm -hmm. So that's what I am attempting to do again here in South Florida now. Like I want, I not want, I will, I will host community events out here, mm -hmm. right? And I want to make them open to everybody, everybody in the community, host it at, at a turf field, very similar to what we used to do fitness, community service, community outreach, something like mm. that, that really helps these communities out. My friends, welcome back to the Smoky Mirror podcast, where we dive deep into the creative minds that are shaping our culture and inspiring us all. My name is Jordan Jones, your host and fellow creator, and I'm on a mission to spread inspiration and knowledge to help people like you leave your mark on the world. From artists to musicians to entrepreneurs and more, join me as we explore the creative <laughs> join me as we explore the intentional creation the art of intentional creation and the forces that drive us to do god's work i was just telling the people that we had on before that, that was my first time doing it without reading it it's just that last part i need that's to get nice, you know bro. what i'm saying that's nice you feel that's it nice. no nah, I, I like that right now i'm really excited because i have my i mean now he's my trainer but before he was sure. really just my friend Fernando Beltran. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. is a coach, an entrepreneur, and definitely I would, I would call you a creator because you're creating a almost like an environment or ecosystem or a, like events or just the way that you're bringing fitness to people and making it a lifestyle that people can have fun and, you know, have a community around, I think is great. So thank you for coming on the show, my guy. It's oh, great to see you. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you having me today. Absolutely. So Reach Performance Training is amazing. I want to go back to what got you really into fitness and like training. Like when when did it click that you wanted to be a coach? Yeah, man. So I would say this is uh, this was way back when I was when I was man maybe fourteen. Mm. Yeah. So I, I would credit a lot of this to uh, to my like first high school strength conditioning coach, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Henry. He was or Coach Cherry in this case. Uh, so. I I lived in Michigan for a brief period of my time, right? Mm -hmm. About four years, give or take. And uh, I did basically like sixth grade through part of like my freshman year of high school out there. And uh, and so, you know, I I didn't have you know those resources or you know a way to get into the gym beforehand. Obviously, also wasn't really interested. Mm -hmm. But because of football, I was forced to go to the weight room um early morning before class or after school and it was at, you know initially it was something that i dreaded i dreaded it i dreaded <laughs> yeah. it but it's either lift or go do another sport and i was like eh, you know as, as you know time time was was you know it was very cramped up for me so i'm like you know what what would allow me to do video games after school well i mean i need you know i still need to get home and play some video games play some call of duty hell some yeah Warfare, you feel me? hell yeah so yeah so you know i was like all right well i need a I need to play. Uh, I need to go. Um, you know, do uh, do lift. You know, yeah. and so it was required for me to be there five times a week. Mm. Um, and from what I remember, those workouts were just nasty, man. Like I was getting <laughs> put through hell and back. Yeah. And I remember like just having you know friends come in also you know from the school, and I'd be like, hey man, you got to try this workout, in, man. This is this is some crazy stuff. Like yeah. like my abs hurt every day. And this is great, <laughs> every you know? day. And I'm sore every day, and we go hard every day, you know. So it was it was something crazy, it was something different. And then you know, lo, you know, after a little bit, I started loving it. Mm -hmm. I started loving the process, loving the the aspect of seeing myself getting stronger and feeling better and feeling healthier and developing new healthier habits, waking up earlier, wanting to go to the gym this increased bout of energy that I had now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, little little did I know then that that was what I wanted to do for, for the rest of my life. Wow. Sense, man. So it, it was real cool. So that's that's kind of where it got started. Again, stemmed from football. And then, uh, and then boom, I just continued working out, um, you know, from, from freshman year of, of high school. Uh, I, I'm, you know, from freshman to sophomore year, I moved back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and when I came back to Chicago, this is kind of where everything started developing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a strength conditioning coach, mm -hmm. right? But I think the knowledge, the base of knowledge that this coach had taught me, 
Um, and it was, you know, it was a lot, but I, I knew very little. And, you know, I, I started getting interested on in how to, like, how do I get people stronger? How do I get myself stronger? And then how do I get other people stronger? So mm-hmm. then I found myself, you know, training with my, with my, with one of my best friends, his name is George and, and Jacob, um, out of this like old grungy, like crazy looking gym. It was, it was an old bar converted into a gym. That's fucking dope. It was, it was crazy, dog. It was crazy. Um, out on the south side on like 63rd in, uh, in Central. And um, and we would go out there. Uh, you needed a key. You paid. You paid for the year. You had a key, and you would go in whatever time you wanted. That's yeah, actually it was, lit. It, it was it was real cool, man. That's it was a real, cool. It was so different, so cool, so unique. Um, but that's where we grinded, and so we would work out. I, that's where I started developing the habit of waking up early. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, school started pretty. I forgot what time school started. I think probably like what seven thirty eight. Mad or early. Yeah, you know, like high yeah, school stuff. So you think early, about it. so fuck? like dumb early, right? Yeah, like why are we? <laughs> why are they making? Because I know even now I'm waking up at seven thirty. I'm like, damn, I was doing this when I was like 15, 16, Waking up at like six a.m. Oof. <sighs> I was I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm like, you know, we we had this habit of waking up early. Right. We had this habit Mm -hmm. simply because it was forced on us. Right. Once we got into college or left high school. Fuck that. Hey, some people chose to stick with it. Some people didn't. Nothing wrong with it. But, you know, you realize whether you're a morning person or you're not. Yeah. So I chose to be one. I wasn't one. I chose to be one. You know, so long story short, that's kind of where the habit also starting, you know, waking up early because we would get to the gym in between 430 and five in the morning. Mm. Grind for about an hour, hour and a half and go back to school. Wow. You know, chug protein shake this and that and then yeah. i started getting into nutrition and i was like oh wait how do i how do i get bigger how do i you know get stronger <laughs> faster this that yeah and then from my sophomore year to my junior and senior year i went to a different school on the west side of chicago called dow college prep and there we didn't have a a, a coach either right mm. so there that's when i started kind of developing a, a bigger broader base in the aspect of like oh maybe maybe i can coach my teammates mm. right maybe i can help other people out and that's when the idea sparked you know um, and also like my um, my uh, one of my one of my teachers that was also my advisor, uh, Mr. Cannon. Shout out to Mr. Cannon, by the way. Shout out, Mr. Cannon. Shout out to Mr. Cannon. Uh, hopefully he'll he'll listen to this. That's later. a lit name too, hey, yes, Mr. Sir. Cannon. Yes, sir, last <laughs> crazy, right? And uh, yeah, no, that he he kind of also kind of pushed me towards following my 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 dreams, my aspirations, and so. Um, then you know I got into college and I you know right away you know as as, as soon as I got out of high school I started training people for free nice you know, just on the yeah. side cool boom 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 and then I started starting you know strength and conditioning coaches and then I started I officially officially started my my strength and conditioning my collegiate strength and conditioning career when I was nineteen wow so that's kind of yeah and I know it was, it was a little long but that's that's where I started and that's how I started I love that so when you went to school you knew like yeah I want to get in did you major in like physical therapy or training no, or so i majored it in uh in exercise science exercise, exercise science. science yeah that's yeah. what it is okay yeah exercise science i wanted to do uh physical therapy i was i changed my majors a couple times because you know i i i wasn't sure um 100 percent if initially if, if this was for me so i'm like you know i'm, I'm in college might, might, as, might as well just take different classes i started off as a criminal justice major mm-hmm. and then i went into uh oh you wanted to be an fbi right yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i wanted we to be an FBI agent, bro. i was like this is this is cool this is different yeah I, yeah i did this program too with the fbi for 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 a little while when i was in high school you know that's it was, cool it's mad cool man but mad me cool. me and uh fernando bonded on uh on on certain things around the, the fbi <laughs> yeah, <thing. bro>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> i love I remember it that? <laughs> i love it that's yeah, awesome. Bro, okay, bro. all right. That, that that's dope. So one thing I wanna, I do want you to to talk about is why you started training people for free. Because people might be listening, like, wait, why do you do it for free? Man, so I, I think a, a big part of 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 what is like you know personal training, strength and conditioning, all, all all this whole career, right? Um, you you got to figure out how to how to train people, right, mm-hmm. and how to work with people. Um, because at at the end of the day, this is a a um a profession that involves a lot of um one-on-one attention, attention to detail, mm-hmm. right? And and really getting to know the person that you're training. It's it's like a relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like I used to take on everybody and anybody, right? It was like, I, I, wanna, I wanna just train anybody so I could get my, my feet wet in this this whole industry. Cause it's a very, um, it's an industry that's very easy to just kind of fall into to, to a pattern of um, just, getting people in and out and not really caring about the client. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people just kind of phase out of it. You know, they, they, they do it for a year, they find out it's not for them and then they leave. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just how it is. There's a lot of turnover, which is fine. You know, better, you know, better for me in a sense. Right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but the, the good ones stay, you know, the good ones stick along. Um, 
but yeah, no, I, I feel like initially you have to provide the service and, and figure out, you know, what it is that you're good at, what it is that you're that you're not good at. And um, it really allowed me personally to, to grow, um, to learn what, you know, what different body, what, what responds well to different body types, um, rep ranges, you know, the element of like maximal strength, you know, power, endurance, like every, like there's, there's, there's so many phases to training, right? And everyone's training goals is completely different from another person, mm-hmm. you know? So like, I remember having like, or very early on in my career, I had like um, a couple pregnant women and I was like, holy crap, what, how do I, how do I, you know? Yeah, like, how do I you train? gotta hold all the human inside of you. Literally. <laughs> I gotta be careful, you wow. know? So then you start reading up about, you know, post and, and, and prenatal um, stuff that, that you need to do, um, exercises and this and that that are, that are more appropriate for that population group. It's just, you really, like, that really helped me learn different population groups and, and what really is required to train those. Because mm. You're going to train kids a little differently than you're going to train adults. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to train athletes differently than you're going to train the general public. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to train the elderly completely different than you're going to treat, you know, again, kids or, you know, it's just, and then, and then you got, you know, people who have knee issues, you know, foot and ankle issues, hip issues. Um, You got to look down, you got to look through the whole chain and figure out what it is that this person is lacking. We, you know, we go in and we strengthen it and make it better no that's good because people i think they underestimate all the variables and factors you have to consider when you're training people because like you said injuries the way that certain exercises could affect that person's body like there really is a lot that goes into it and i've I've, as someone who's trained with you i can tell that you're really always watching and like thinking about those things like forward thinking like oh if you have a you know something wrong with your back we have another machine where you can do the same thing so i can definitely see the passion and the 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 drive behind it because you got to want to do it because it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's and a it's, a, work. it's a lot of focus too yeah 100 percent. it's crazy it, it, like uh, i think some people don't understand how not just physically taxing but emotionally and, and and also spiritually in the sense too taxing this 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 career can be because you know everyone's everyone's you know energy is very different right come you know, some people come in with they they come in amped up from from work or from a you know a crazy meeting or a hectic day, mm-hmm. and uh, realistically you're you're there you're you're there you should be you should be listening more than you should be talking, mm. right? That's just my opinion. I mean your your client is paying you for a service. Um, meanwhile, also like some some clients use this as really though some clients use this as therapy as a way to just kind of let things out, right? And you know we'll be training. And I'll be like, all right, you know, he's really talking about what's going on, and you know, <laughs> he or she will be talking about what's going on in you know their their life and. With work, with school, with kids, that, that, that. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, you're like, like whoa, what? Yeah, I thought yeah. we were just gonna do some curls. Or yeah, do that. yeah, <laughs> like we're just supposed to do some lower body. We're getting deep we're today. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know? but it's, it's it's part of it, man. It's yeah. part of it. All right, so walk me through this because I want to talk about how you did the college coaching, but I don't know if that was before or after the Chicago Under Armour thing, the first the first go around. That was pre COVID, right? Oh yeah. So that no. So, uh, I had been doing. A, like collegiate strength conditioning since 2017, I want to say. Um, so that's when I started my, my collegiate like strength conditioning like career. Mm-hmm. And um, and then from there, I was at North Park University uh, for a handful of years. Both, you know, I did my my, my bachelor's and my master's there. Um, but I was also, meanwhile, I was also you know getting real life experience as a coach. Mm-hmm. Not just as a, I was an intern, I was, I, was, I was a coach. And to me, that was that was completely wild i was a student and a coach that is crazy which is just crazy you don't really hear about that um and then i interned at northwestern twice in 2019 and 2021 and then um came out here the reason i moved out here was for florida memorial university for fmu Dope. um take a take a strength conditioning job there um but the under armor events were, were were completely different um that was hosted in 2020 summer of 2020 i want to say during covid right yeah yeah man so it was uh it was it was something crazy that uh uh coach sydney he uh, him and i we who's coach sydney so coach so sydney he's um he's a coach based out of chicago okay him and i we went to north park together he played football Oh, okay got it. um great guy man and so he he uh you know him and i we, we linked during the pandemic and we wanted to start something crazy something different and we started some you know we started first off working out um outside mm-hmm. you know together because i had some kettlebells i had some bands and all of this and that so i'd bring those with my car we'd go to an empty parking lot or a park or something we'd go work out there you know because we still had to get our work in there. hell yeah we still had to get gyms our work are closed in. but we still gotta work yeah we still gotta work so you know we got our work in and then we 
we're like, well, why not host this? Like, why not host an event out of this, right? Outside, you know, because mm-hmm. we can't, you know, couldn't do anything inside. So we did. We first started with a bunch of friends, then started building up and up and up and up. And then we we just blew up over 80 people, over 90 people. We had vendors. We had Then we had Under Armour also, you know, help us out with the event. And it was, it was something crazy, something cool, something completely different that the city hadn't seen, in my opinion, before, mm-hmm. right? And um, the cool thing is not only was it a, like, fitness oriented event but right after Sydney would do breathing and yoga and mm. all this really cool stuff that is really really unique to him mm-hmm. so uh all that being said like that was that was really cool i think the community aspect the building community aspect was 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 amazing and the community service that we sometimes do after would would be even better yeah know? talk talk about like just the reception from people because clearly it was a need because people started flocking you know like yeah. what was it like when the first it was just like wow it's just me and him then it's like maybe three other people and now we're like 90 like it what was, the hell it was so crazy man <laughs> i think the the build-up was just it, it was it wasn't something i mean we we i think we definitely manifested it mm-hmm. manifested more people but it wasn't necessarily something that I mean, it's not that we didn't want it, but it wasn't. We didn't necessarily anticipate it growing that big, mm-hmm. but it did. And it was during a time that I feel like people really needed the community. Mm-hmm. People really needed to go outside and talk to others, and be able to interact with other human beings because COVID sure. really shut everything down. Um, so, yeah, man. And so that again, the the building community aspect was so important, so important. Um, getting to know everybody by name, you know, mm-hmm. shaking hands and. You know, making people feel comfortable, although during that time it was a little harder with the hell, you know. Right. So we were breaking we were breaking rules for sure. That was that was something that mm. I mean in retrospect, we I, I don't know if we could have gotten fined for it probably, but it was just like it was something that, you know, it was not it was something that we were supposed to do or we should have done and and all all in all, but we did. And we kind of broke rules and we said, you know, screw it, we're gonna provide this these services mm-hmm. for people. Did it ever did you ever run into any trouble with like the city or like yeah, it, it was more. It was more like with with regulations and everything going on with people. Um, just being like, oh, you know, things are going. You know, the case is ramping up again. I, right. I shouldn't go. Or, yeah, or like we are, now we gotta wear masks while we coach outside. Crazy. Like, like it's just like you know, dumb little things. You know, it's like, come on, man. Like yeah, you know, I mean, outside. but again, uh, respect. I, yeah, I respect. It. You know, we it. didn't know at the time, but we I don't know. know. When I'm looking back, I'm like, come on, like people outside being healthy. Like, is that really what we want to discourage? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly i don't know but but no i think that's that's great one one of my things that i'm wondering is like what what did you learn from building that community like what did you learn Uh, i think it's it comes back to like authenticity and passion Mm. right i feel like if you're if you're passionate about what you do and you you authentically care about what you do and how you can affect people it it can really go a long way people can really sense that the authenticity Mm -hmm. people can really feel it if you're if you're in it for just the money then, then people will sense that too. <laughs> and it goes back to this career too, man. Yeah. If, man, like I wouldn't be making money if, if that's the only thing that I thought about. Now, mm-hmm. that's very important, right? The, obviously, the monetary compensation is, is, is extremely important because that's what feeds me and also helps my family out. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, um, I think that, again, you, you, have to come, you have to come with, with a place of, you know, through a place of, pa- of passion and, and um, wanting to, to make an impact in, in a person's life. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yeah, I love that. I think if you start there, the money comes. Yes, yes. Easily. Which you know? also, you, uh, there, there goes all the, 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 the business side. You got to market. You got to do this, that, blah, 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 which which is definitely very important. But the, the essence of it is, do you, are you passionate about this? Do you love what, to, what you do? Mm-hmm. Then, then go. Go. Because yeah, that's, that's going to be your fuel to help you when, all the, when the shit is hard. Because yeah. Lord knows, like you said, the marketing, the business aspect, accounting, like all that extra shit that you weren't Bro. signed up for. Like I wanted to train people. I didn't want to be looking at spreadsheets. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was going through like my MBA and, um, and I was like reading through textbooks, doing like accounting classes. And I was like, man, this shit's boring. But like, <laughs> like I was, yeah, bro, I was taking these 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 online classes that it was during the pandemic when I was finishing up my MBA. And I was like, damn, bro, I'm not gonna remember shit. Like, how am I gonna apply this? And then, well, shit, not running my own business now. I'm not directly applying this. Literally, right? in, in the most, yeah, the most obvious way. But again, that's that was a great base of knowledge. Bro. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Florida Memorial, like when you got there, tell me about that. Like, who, what teams were you coaching? Was it all of them? Or, like, just all tell me about them, that. man. It was <laughs> everything, man. At FMU, I think it was probably the, it was probably the craziest experience. It was probably the, the most all in thing that I that I that I could have done to that point in mm-hmm. my life. Um, I, I took a gamble right right before actually right before going to FMU. Um, I had offers from different schools, but it was. 
The school was like way out in North Dakota. Respectfully, 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 but I was like, oh, North what, Dakota. What are we gonna do out there? You know? Right, like, nothing. Like, yeah, exactly. Ooh. We were like deep in Tennessee, and I was like, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. I'm like, but then I heard Miami, and I was like, ooh, okay, hey. that sounds that sounds more more like my vibe, mm-hmm. right? Um, but back <laughs> back to the point. Um, yeah, man. So right, right before I, I even accepted or like, you know, d- decided to come out here, I was on the verge of just switching my career. Really? Yeah, man. I was in a very, I think I was in a very low point. Um, both I wasn't making it financially. Mm-hmm. COVID had really kind of messed things up with, mm-hmm. with, with my business out there in Chicago. Um, I felt to that point, I just had burned a lot of bridges, just hadn't done things correct. What? done things correctly but it hadn't done the things that, that, that you know that should have been done mm-hmm. um and really didn't take care of the bit of my business the way that i should have mm-hmm. so you know i i just felt like i you know i was like shoot like all these bills are piling in this and that like i need a, i need a way to i need to figure this out because i know i'm i know i'm a damn good coach mm-hmm. but it's just for some reason it just isn't working out maybe i just need a change of environment right and uh i remember like sitting down with my dad and i was like man i was like i was i was in the kitchen and I was visiting my my, my my family at the time and I was like, man, I was like, this is this is the last place I'm gonna apply to. And then I'm done. Like if I don't get this job, like because I was just I kept hearing no from here, no from there, no, 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 or like or just you know, universities weren't messaging back or whatever it was. And it's 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 very competitive. The strength conditioning sure. the strength conditioning field is very competitive. And, you know, the connections really matter. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I just I was like, damn, like there's there's nothing. Like there's there's nothing out here for me. Um, and I just don't want to go to these other two places that I had on you know, offers for. And I was like, ah, all right, I'm going to apply to this, to this school. And it, and it sounded very enticing. Like I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. This is different, different environment, you know? Um, and I felt like I'd really make an impact and applied, got an interview and then boom, before I knew it, like everything just changed. I had, you know, I decided within a week and then boom, like a week went by, left Chicago, um, Drove down here with, with my best friend Alex and from Chicago. It took us like twenty seven hours, something like that, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, you know how the drive is. Yeah, man. it's crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy drive, and uh, boom. And then from there, that that's kind of where everything started. And um, and then at, at FMU, um, once once I started in September, it was just it was just go. Mm-hmm. You know, it yeah. was go, man. I was like, let's let's get this work. You know, I was living in Pompano Beach at the time. That's pretty Which, far. Yeah, Pompano Beach to Miami Gardens. <laughs> That's far as hell. <laughs> I was waking up, yeah, around like like I said, three, three thirty, you know, to to get on the road and make sure because it's it an hour even without traffic. Whew. You know, one hour without traffic and it would take me to get home, it'd be about an hour and a half. Yeah, some traffic. So traffic and all that stuff. So it was, it was a little bad. But but yeah, man, apart from that, like back to the point, like it was it was, it was a dope experience, man. It was Football, baseball, basketball, soccer, like wow, everything, awesome. every sport. Track, yeah. Track, like no, track was the only one that, oh, that I didn't get. Oh, okay. But, um, and I've had had experience with all those sports. Same thing at North Park. I basically the same thing. I was doing North Park University. Mm-hmm. I did it at FMU, and um, and it was just different because this time I had so many new ideas. So like, I had the juices going. I was excited. I was motivated. I was like, I. I'm like this is this is my last opportunity. This is my last shot. Right, going so all in. Type. I got to go all in, and and I did. You know, I did uh, for a handful of months, and it was it was awesome, man. But I big thing about the the collegiate strength conditioning field is it really wears you out. Mm-hmm. The hours driving an hour back. Yeah, yeah, man. It was it was the the commitment. Which don't get me wrong, I'm I'm down for it. It's, it's not that, but it's like then you think about the pay. Right. And then I'm like, this does this isn't adding up for the amount of hours, the driving, everything, what I'm putting myself through, what I put my body through, yeah, my mind through. Um, I just it wasn't adding up. And I still wanted to make an impact in, in, in these athletes' lives, but also like how can I do that if I'm not taking care of me? Right, exactly. So I come first, you know. I do. You can't take care of other people until you take care of yourself. Exactly. Exactly. It, it comes back always comes back to that, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm not healthy, it's just everything's going to suffer. Mm-hmm. So it, it comes back to me. So I just noticed that like I wasn't, you know, towards towards uh it was like towards uh December, November, it was a couple months in. I was loving it. I was loving the athlete portion, the being able to coach these athletes and being able to um get to make an impact and to see the progress and your growth. It's it was so dope. But then what I didn't like was pay some of the administrative stuff that just wasn't mm-hmm. you know, the politics that was behind like you found you know 
find out some stuff and I'd be like, whoa, this is, this is nuts. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Yeah. And there's a lot of things that like I wanted to, you know, I wanted to bring in and do with, with UA that wasn't allowed and like, mm. you know, and so I was just kind of like, all right, I keep, I'm trying to make an impact, but I keep getting like derailed and not, or not giving, not, I'm not allowed the opportunity because of certain, you know, red tape, that, bureaucracy yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. All right. I'm going to do this on my own. So. I was also during that time. I was also um, training at a private facility, you know, doing clients on the side because that's also that drove me some good bread. Mm -hmm. And um, I had never gone all in on private training. I've always been a collegiate strength conditioning coach. That's how that was my identity, right? That yeah, was my identity. That's who I was. <laughs> but I'm like, huh? What if I went private? What if? Right? Yeah. And then I was at a you know at a private facility, um, and things got really enticing. You know, there was NFL players coming in. That was one of my dreams to coach some NFL players. And so I got the opportunity to to do that, right? And that was that was sick. That was that was really cool. So then I dropped <laughs> I dropped that from you. I quit. <laughs> I quit. Yeah, like I'm ready. To... Yeah, I'm like let's let's go. I man. love you guys, but damn, hey, I love y'all, man. But, <laughs> but the opportunity. Day, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> but you know, very appreciative of everything that went on there. You for know, sure. Coach Trip out there. Um, you know, great guy too. Uh, you know, I learned a lot. Learned a lot from those opportunities. Learned a lot from you know, at, you know, as a coach, but also as a person, as a man. Um, and yeah, so like I said, I went private about, shoot, about a year ago. Wow. So I quit about a year ago mm -hmm. and, uh, I just went all in on this and it's been so many ups and downs, man, because again, it was, it was a crazy like identity shift. I was like, it might not seem like much, but it was like, again, I was a collegiate strength and conditioning coach. Now I'm like private, not, not coaching as many athletes as I'd like to. And it was a conflict of interest because some of my athletes, it was like, shit like how do i charge him like how do i charge someone right. that you know like because as a strength coach at a university you get paid by the university you don't get paid by the kids directly you exactly. feel me? like yeah but now i have to ask for money like, yeah. from these college kids that i know is, is a little bit harder to to get you know get to them pay to, it, to yeah. pay you know which i understand be so you're paying for your education and now you, know, you got other expenses too plus training on top All right it's tough um but i tried making it as you know as, as good an environment and then Boom, then we had, uh, then I created a college program, right, last year. And then, uh, you know, it was, it was me and, 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 and two other coaches, we were running that and went really well. Talk uh, about that, what do you mean by created a program, like a college program? Yeah, so it was a, it was a collegiate, like, strength conditioning, like, in, strength conditioning program, but in the private sector. Mm, okay. So I felt like that's where I could really make a bigger impact, mm -hmm. right? Because I still wanted to train athletes. Um, and now the, the main driver the financially was, was my private clients, mm -hmm. which was great. You know, was, you know, good, good money. And now I don't have to worry so much about the aspect of like money over my passion. Yeah. In a sense, right? Now they're, they're finally starting yeah, to line up. Exactly. Yeah. To, to line up. And so, yeah, man. So, uh, we started like a, a, uh, college strength conditioning program, um, performance program. And, and it was great, man. We had about like 20 plus athletes. Um, nice. from, from, you know, all over the South Florida area mm -hmm. and really cool, man. And so then, you know, that was done in, in like, then in like September, then I left that private facility and now I'm at this place called Symmetry Fitness. That's where we've been going, right? That's where we've been going. Yes, sir. That place is nice. Yeah. That place is nice. It's going to be even nicer with that facility. So that's, so, uh, there's a new facility opening up in June. Oh, they're getting a new spot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be even like bigger? three times the size. Wow. Yeah, man. It's yeah. Gonna that's going to be crazy. sweet. Cause you got some sweet machines in there. Oh man. It's about, it. it's, it's, you think that's nice. Like, like shout out to, to Ahmed, by the way. I'm <laughs> your shout out to Yeah. But shout out to, to Ahmed. He's the owner of Symmetry. Nice. Uh, great man. Really, really great man. Um, but, but yeah, like he, he's, he's really he really wants to make a, a huge impact in the South Florida area and it's going to make waves, man. This new facility, once it, once it opens, then y'all, y'all got to come out. No, for sure. I mean, I, I, he wants to make waves. I feel like you want to make some waves too. I mean, I think oh, yeah, you've already gotten, you're starting a little community now. You first was me and Justin. Now we got special coming in that bitch. Yes, now we're going to get Diego. We're going to get Diego's fat ass, <laughs> lazy Diego's ass, lazy ass. Fuck your rest day. In the damn gym. All bro. right. You hear this? Find Diego? another rest day. I don't know. Get yourself in the damn gym, bro. Yes. No, facts. Yes. Thanks. Real shit. <laughs> <laughs> we got man, and I miss Chris, bro. His ass Damn, Chicago, bro. Chris, Chris, yeah. Bro. And people who <sighs> long fans of the podcast will know Chris. Man. He used to be helping me behind the the camera too. Shout out to Chris. I love Chris. Yeah, hey, man. Shout out to Chris. But bro. yeah, I, I can I see the vision, bro. Like we could be doing that that thing you was doing in Chicago down here. Yes, and that's that's so back to all this, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I am attempting to do again here in South Florida now. Like I want. 
I now nah, well, I will I will host community events out here, mm-hmm. right? And I want to make them open to everybody, everybody in the community. Host it at a, at a turf field, very similar to what we used to do. Um, now I do want to make this not just a fitness event, but a like a, a whole event in and of itself where we do fitness, community service, community outreach, something like mm. that that really helps these communities out, mm. right? Because I feel like the, the the biggest part of what I what I was brought here to do was to give back. I like right? that, yeah. So definitely gotta 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 follow what 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 God has in store for me, man. Mm-hmm. I really feel like God wants me to go and 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 uh, and, and give back to 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 the people who also deserve it. I think it's important to really lean into those feelings because sometimes you'll get feelings and you're like, shit, I don't know how I'm supposed to. Like you get an idea in your head, you're like, I don't know how I can do that, or okay. like, where would I even start? But just lean into it and be like, what if it did happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. what if? You know what I'm. I've had so many ideas pop into my head where I'm like, oh hell no, you know that's the first, <laughs> that's the first thing I'm like, yeah right. But then then I'm like, why not? Like, why not? we learn a lot of the oh you know we ha- I have to learn how to do th- I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to get those resources or I don't have enough money like don't worry about that like just take the first step that you can control first things start to line up that's what I've noticed like if you have that vision. It didn't come from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you're, it's, a, it's a gut feeling, gut inclination. You're having it for a reason. Like lean yes. into that feeling and chase it. Yes, and man, to that point, that's literally how I got to South Florida. I felt an inclination to apply. I've never been to Florida before. I was like, okay, let's. let's so you just it. picked Florida Memorial. And it was like, yeah, no, Florida. I didn't pick. Like I was looking I, at schools, like job openings. And yeah, that was one of them. But like my gut was telling me Florida, Florida. I wrote out like uh, and I wish I, I wish I should have brought that list. I was gonna bring it, but I was I I brought a list. I had a list of of cities that I wanted to relocate to, mm-hmm. right? Just things that like after like just some deep thought and prayer, I felt like God like incl- I don't know, man. Just that, again that gut feeling. I, I, mm-hmm. I say it's God. I you know I do believe I, it's God telling me this. I is, think this so is, too. This is what it is, and I started writing down things as far as like locations and and possible places to go look into and relocate. Um, one of them was Jacksonville, and then I don't know why. I <laughs> Jacksonville. I, yeah, bro, I don't know why I looked at Jacksonville, but it just kept popping in my brain. Yeah. Jacksonville, I, you know, and then I looked at like Fort Lauderdale mm. because my fake was. From there. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I love it. My fake ID when I was in college. That's hilarious. It was from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> so awesome. I was like, oh, nice. this might mean this something. Might mean yeah, something, right. Let, let's 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 get it. Let's go look <laughs> into it. And I did, and I was like, "Oh, oh, this looks nice." And then, you know, Miami too. I was like, "This is beautiful." Okay, um, and just these, these again, this inclination brought me here. This inclination um, helped me build my business. Like the the name Reach actually came from actually. The, so this is my logo, right? Mm-hmm. So um, this is like my the the three lines uh, resemble like three pillars of um, performance, right? Which is stability, strength, and power, mm-hmm. right? Um, but reach came from just ideas that i was throwing at a board i have a huge whiteboard mm-hmm. where i write down all these ideas on a daily basis um and if i don't write it on my line, on my whiteboard i write it in, in, in like sticky notes or in this this pad that i have um this little booklet that i just boom just ideas that pop in mm-hmm. sometimes i wake up like super early i do wake up super early in general but like dumb early like three right and i'll be like <laughs> i just have this idea in my head and i'm like i gotta write this down yeah I gotta write this down now because I'm gonna forget. I've been hours. there. I've been there plenty of times. I hate it when I'm like I'm tired as hell and I want to go to sleep, yeah. but my mind is going crazy with ideas. I'm downloading some crazy shit. I'm like I need to write this down yes. so I don't forget. Yes. Otherwise <laughs> you're gonna forget, man. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I need to take action on this right now. Yeah. That's that's yeah, man. That's that's huge. Um, but yeah, man, those are those inclinations. You gotta, you gotta follow them, bro. You gotta, you gotta follow them because they're gonna lead you somewhere. Yeah, it's gonna lead you somewhere. You don't you don't know where those inclinations are gonna take you. That's a great message. I really believe that everybody has a gift to give. 100%. And if you deny those feelings that you're having, you're not going to be able to give it. I feel you're denying your blessing, man. Yeah, you're, you're, blocking, your you're blocking your own shot. Like, man, like I remember uh, when I was on this podcast in December of 2021. I remember. You were right yes. here. Yes, I was, I was right there. Shout out to the Scut cast. Right? That was, yeah. Chaz was right over here. We were talking about it at the time. My, my business had was under a different name. And, um, man, I remember that. Like, that, that whole, like, three, four months up to that point, it was just... So much turbulence, man. Um, but I had manifested some things. I had manifested, mm-hmm. you know, more prosperity for my, my, for my, for my people, um, more prosperity for my athletes, for myself. And looking back in retrospective with all that, I'm like, wow, like all this stuff came together. Maybe not in the way that I would have liked it to, but in, in, in God's way. Right. 
right? That's it, it. All makes sense when you look back. At first, you can't see the the picture, but when you look back, you get there. You're like, wow! Like yeah. it makes everything made sense. Like it all lined up. It's crazy how it works out like that. Yeah, man, exactly. And now, like, look at us, full circle. We back on here. Yeah, bro. You got to have some more events coming up with Under Armour, right? Yes, yes. So, cool one coming up is May sixth, Saturday, May sixth. Um. So Coach James, shout out to Coach James. Shout out to Coach James. Um, yeah, so Coach James and I, we are hosting an event. Uh, same thing in downtown for uh, not for a lot of not yet. <laughs> so yeah, soon, so right? Coach James and I are hosting an event uh, downtown Chicago, uh, May sixth, and it's gonna be at I want to say eight a.m. Yeah, it starts at eight a.m. Um, and it'll go through ten a.m. So eight a.m. to nine a.m. We're gonna do a uh, the workout right, the training session. And then right after that, we do a private shopping event with UA. So you'll get an exclusive discount and it'll be really cool. We're gonna raffle out some really cool things too, some shoes, some clothes. So it's gonna be a really dope event. You don't wanna miss that. Uh, anybody in Chicago. Right? That sounds sick. So, so you're gonna work out and then you guys get to shop afterwards? We get to shop right after you get a special discount. And then we we, we, we go, we get this work in. You, you get some workout gear and you go home. Wow, that's <laughs> fucking lit. T talk about working with Under Armour. What's that experience been yeah, like? Yeah, man, it's been it's been cool, man. I feel like the 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 um the the stuff that we've done together in the past and and currently and hopefully into the future is going to be really sweet. Um, there's stuff that I want to do out here in South Florida too. Um, and uh, it's 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 all I don't want to speak about it too soon yet, but it's right. it's all coming together. It's a lot of big things coming. Uh, I gotta keep, you know, I gotta keep grinding, making sure these things are, 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 are you know, happening. So, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of great things coming up, man. A lot of great things, a lot of things that are that, that are being planned out, and be, you know, and they're in the, in the in the work right now. But yeah, that's it's, dope. It's been cool. So May six is the date. Yes, sir. May six. All, right. All right, everybody, mark your calendar. Yeah, every, May 6th. everybody, mark your calendar. Man, yes. I wish I wait. You know what? Yeah, Saturday, May six. I think I'm gonna be in town because my homie. Hold on, let me check because I think my dog. <laughs> yeah, bro, I just checked out. Let me show you. I think is Saturday, not a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think, think my gotta, dog sure. is having a wedding, sh a, or no, not a wedding, a baby shower. Yeah, my dog's having a baby shower May seventh, so I'm gonna be in town. I'm definitely pulling up. <laughs> Slide through. Man, That's gonna go. be lit. Yeah, bro. Oh, yes, please, yeah. please, and I know Chris will be there. Hey! Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be there. Hey, oh, let, let, let's let, let's get Diego's ass again. Yo, there. Diego, get your ass <laughs> up. <laughs> Yeah. Justin, Justin, slide might, through. Right, I mean, he always he loved going back to Chicago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he loves I think we all shit. do, right? To a certain extent. Nice yes, to see sir. the fam. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm excited now. It's gonna be a great event. Yeah, man, it's gonna be real. Damn, cool. that's great. Real cool. So, uh, how does that go work? Like, you just hit them up. They hit you up. Like, how does it go? You guys setting this up? Yeah, man. So, um, there, so there's uh, there's a connection that we have there. Um, his name is Jose, and so. We, you know, he helps us out uh, pl to plan out the events. Uh, he talks with the store and then he kind of garners everything that we need to do as far as like marketing and make sure everything, everything kind of gets uh, settled up. Mm -hmm. you know? How'd you so, meet um, him? Because I know other Ooh. people. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. So how I met him was like inclinations, right? Yeah. So I had, I had, um, I had been, one, this right before the pandemic, I wanted to host an event, right? And um, I wanted to host a fitness event for the public for for free and um and so i was like oh man what you know i've always loved honor Armor. i thought you know i thought their their workout stuff all their their, their stuff for specifically for, for training i've mm -hmm. always thought it was amazing because i always used it for football i thought it was great um and so you know i remember like when i was young i was, I was like man mom I'm, i told my mom i was like one day one day I'm not gonna even have to pay for these clothes. Like one day I'm just gonna get them for free, and these brands, the, like Under Armour, is gonna give me stuff. That's lit. Manifested that stuff, but like, but um, back to it. Like I had just gotten out of like a job interview, right? And um, I had killed it. And I was just feeling, I was feeling on fire. I I was like trying to figure out who I can. Before that, I was trying to figure out a couple of days who I can who I can hit up and and see how I could host an event, mm -hmm. right? It was. It was uh, it was cold. It was outside, so I was like, "All right, probably gonna have to happen in the summer." But I need right. to plan this out now. Exactly. So, I uh, I was like, "Hmm, what if I just go to the Under Armour store?" I was already feeling good. I was dressed up good. I was like, "Why don't I just show up to the Under Armour store and ask who I could speak to?" Mm. Right. And go in there. I go up the escalator. This big, beautiful, like Under Armour store. It's it's amazing. If you haven't been to the it, to the Brand House downtown, it's in downtown. Chicago. Oh yeah. yeah, right downtown Chicago. Sick. Michigan Avenue 
And um, yeah, man. So I went up there, and then I was like, "Who can I? Is there anybody I could speak to? I'm a coach, and I want to host an event here." Da, da, da. And then they call somebody up, and the man himself, Jose, like he he was right there. We 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 started talking. I exchanged business cards, and went from there. And then we again we exchanged information, kept in contact with him. Pandemic hit, and I was like, ah, "Damn it!" Yeah. Dude, ah. You know, at that time, I thought we were all just gonna. I don't know. I thought it was gonna be the like apocalypse movie type deal. <laughs> right, it was yeah, scary. Like we were gonna crumble. But nobody knew. It was nobody happen, knew it was gonna happen, man. Early on, so yeah. So I was like, all right, this is this is done. But again, when things started being a little bit more open, I, you know, um, we we ended up just hitting him up. I ended up hitting him up, and and uh, you know, he, he's been awesome. Always, always been very. Uh, very supportive of, of of what i have going on so nice I really appreciate him i'm glad people heard that because it's like look you got to take chances and go out and meet somebody Bro, like you gotta you gotta email and i was emailing different brands i was emailing nike new balance like i didn't care i was like i, I want i want a partner i want somebody a big brand to, to partner up with with this and and help me engage in the community mm -hmm. right and really integrate both what i could do for for fitness but also like the community like building a community around all this stuff and having people reoccurringly come in and and uh wanting to come in on you know once a month or twice a month every yeah. saturday or whatever it was you know so you know and and now same thing i want to get people excited about this i want people to get hyped up about this so, right looking forward to working yeah, out exactly looking forward to, to working seeing your out friends and, and like oh yeah, yeah pushing exactly, each other man, exactly so you know i i love i think you know obviously my, my passion is training athletes um and i think the big thing with the athletes is they they establish a community mm -hmm. right so then you do something very similar with adults, but again, you got to make sure they're, you know, the same thing in that circle, building that community, inviting people, you know, being friendly with it. <laughs> being friendly, all right. Being, being friendly, creating an yeah. environment that people want to be in. Exactly. Man. Yeah. Exactly. Yo, Nando, I really love this conversation. Where can people follow you to keep in touch? Yes, sir. So uh, people can follow me on Instagram uh, at ReachPFT um, or my personal Instagram, which is at Nando.AV. Um, and yeah, that's how people can can follow me, can uh, you know, kind of see what what I have going on. There's a lot of great things that I've you know also going to be producing videos and this and that, and me putting out uh, with different athletes, highlighting different athletes. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, the next few months, there's nice. gonna be a lot of cool creative content. And if they want you to train them, they should just DM you or yes, DM me, um, DM me or email me at uh, Fernando at reach dash pft dot com. That's my email. Um, and you can email me to inquire about rates and this and that, but um, what anything? Just yeah, you know, just hit me up. I'm you know, I'm pretty open to you know getting anybody to come in and, and you know trying the the, the training out because we have to make sure that we're we're the we're the right fit for each other. But mm -hmm. um, any any athletes in the South Florida area, May first, starting the college sports performance program in Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's going to be great speed work, great strength conditioning work in the weight room, and overall great community, great people. So um, it's going to be sick, man. It's going to be really sick these next few months with athletes with. Everybody else, it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. That's dope. Yep. So, hey, tap in with Nando. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. This guy is a great coach, <laughs> passionate. I love it. I appreciate you, bro. No, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. This is a great episode, brother. For sure. We're about to